Hello and good morning everybody. Good Move morning. up girls, we've all got to get in and squish in and here we are. Squish it is, um, I'm, gonna, I'm <laughs> sitting on someone's lap, hi. <laughs> Hello everybody, this is the Monday Morning Cooking Club and we are live and alive in the Monday Morning Cooking Club and kitchen. Kicking. And kicking. Alive and kicking actually. And cooking, alive kicking and cooking, how about that? This is Facebook Live number nine. And remember to, to comment, say hi, because we love it when we can see that you're watching. It makes us really excited. So today is the first session for 2017. And, oh, hey, Maddie, great to see you. Great ses uh, first session for 2017. And we're really excited to say Happy New Year, everybody, and welcome back. Um, hello, Esther, I can see you've joined. Haven't said hi yet, but Esther's always one of the first on, which is, is just amazing. Oh, hi from Guatemala. Lucky you. Hope Woo. you're having a great holiday. We have got a pretty jam-packed session today, and I'll tell you what we're going to do. We're going to have a little chat in a minute about what we've been cooking. I think we should move over. Okay. I feel like we're not centred. Let's right, get centred. Oh, I don't know why you're thinking that. How's that? Is that better? Much better. You know, we plan all morning to start, and then when we start, we're not ready. It's quite funny, but okay. anyway. Good. Good. All happy? Good. Um, so today we are going to have a chat about what's been happening, about what we're doing with the new book, which is so exciting. And we're going to cook a couple of things. We're going to cook a new recipe from the new book, the first time we've done this. And Lynn's going to tell you all about that in a minute. And it's beautiful and healthy and simple. And you'll all absolutely love it. We lived on it over summer. And then because it's Australia Day on Thursday, and Jax is going to tell you about Australia Day in a sec, we are making, what else do you make on Australia Day but? Lamingtons. So we're going to make a quick batch of lamingtons to show you how simple they are. So let's just chat and talk to you about what we've been doing over the last month. We've all been um, in Australia, we've all been having a little break from official cooking duties, but um, I've been up north in Byron Bay, for those who have been been following Instagram, you would have seen what I've been cooking. And pretty much my um, best thing that I enjoyed over the summer was making salads. Um, of course, in that brilliant Breville giant oh, yeah. um, food processor which shreds vegetables, I would say better than a mandolin. It is extraordinary. And I would make a big box, big Tupperware box of vegetables at the beginning of the week. Cabbage, radish, fennel, Brussels sprouts, red cabbage, lots of things, and then put them away in the fridge, and then every day, choose stuff and make a salad. And it was so simple and so easy, and I'd pick up some fish and grill it one day and put it on, or some chicken thigh fillets on the barbecue, and that was my best thing about summer. Jess? And my, my go-to recipe was to get the mandolin and finely slice uh, yellow squash and fennel, and just reserve the little fennel fronds, mm. and then make a lemony dressing, just uh, lemon and olive oil, lots of black pepper and salt, and toss it round, and make that like a, um, an hour or so before, so that the dressing can settle in, and then just sprinkle the fronds cut up on top. Best salad, lasts forever, put in the fridge like your cabbage, yeah, yeah. and then just keep reserving, reserving, and reserving. <laughs> it's the salad that keeps on giving. <laughs> That sounds great. Lynn, what, have you, what were you up to? I made lots of, new, of the dishes from the new book. So because it was so hot in Sydney, I made sort of beautiful salads and the beautiful fish recipes. Um, and the other thing that I did was I pickled capsicum, which was really simple. Oh, I haven't tried that oh, yet. Oh, I made it's it. It's really after beautiful. You, after you, you make it. a brine, slice the capsicum mm. in a beautiful breville machine. My family <laughs> and, loved it. Um, and it also lasts for days and it can com be combined with anything. It's really, sounds really good. It was good. My turn? Yeah, Your go. Turn. <laughs> enfin bref. Um, what was that? Enfin bref. What does it's that mean? very onomatopoeic. It means finally in French. Oh. <laughs> um, anyway, hi. I have gone crazy for kohlrabi. I've discovered it and um, I actually used the French fry chipper disc on the Breville Whiz Pro and I've been essentially kind of it, it's my cheats way of doing the spiral, yeah. the spiralizing, yeah, yeah, yeah. and I do kohlrabi, Japanese radish, which is daikon or yeah, daikon, yeah. how daikon. do I say it, yeah. daikon. daikon, and carrots, and sometimes zucchini, and I do it with a very lemony dressing and lots and lots of seeds, and the leftovers sit in the dressing and it just gets better and better and better, and we eat it for... Well, I make about, you know, this much, and yeah. we eat it for about three days. Yeah. And I've yeah. gone Fabulous. mad for kohlrabi. It is my new hot thing. Uh, do you have a problem with the colour? Remember we tried no. a recipe once, 
No, um, we did try a recipe, and I and think it, it was the brown. dressing. Yeah, it the was dressing. the dressing that discoloured yeah, it. Yeah. And we won't go into details, um, but no, it's amazing, and it tastes crunchy, and it's healthy, and it's just amazing. Hey Tess, hey Tess. Oh, she's got an orange chiffon cake in the oven right now. Oh, we'd love to see a picture when it's out. Ah, uh, yeah, we can't wait for the new book either. We're very excited. Very excited. So let me talk about Let's the new down. book. So the book is actually, as we speak, being printed, right? So it's somewhere, wherever it is, and it is being printed, which is a very exciting thought for us. It's sort of like having a baby. It's like the last, your last, the last, the last few <laughs> days of the pregnancy, and we're just waiting, waiting for it to be born. And I'm hoping that we'll get a copy of it on, on our desk maybe in a month or when, so. When do we start yelling in pain and saying, get me the epidural? <laughs> no, I think we've had the pain already. I think the pain's been. So. It's a back to front okay, pregnancy. So we're on yeah. the so it's now. only it's <laughs> only the joy to come. So we'll show you as soon as we get it in our hands, we'll show it to you. But it's, it is so beautiful and we are so, so excited to share it with all of you. Uh, and all the amazing recipes and stories and the photographs and the design and everything is fabulous. It's so we're starting our launch program in March. So please check in on our website, which is of course mondaymorningcookingclub.com.au. Mm -hmm. We have an events thing. If you look at the top bar, it says events. If you click on that, you can see all the events coming up and we'll start loading them as we confirm them. But at the moment we are going to Melbourne, the week starting the 21st of March, sorry, the 20th of March. Yeah. Um, Jackie corrected me the other day and she was right. Come so on it's Monday the 20th. Sydney from the 27th of March and um, Brisbane. Brisbane. Uh, when's Brisbane? April. April. Yep, April uh, and LA. Woohoo! <laughs> Go LA! <laughs> LA uh, the first week or so of June. So we're really, really excited and we'll keep you posted with all that. Can I so, just say, Judy yeah. Wilkenfeld, welcome. And Judy's asked, where do you get your kohlrabi from? She thought it might be not available. Oh, you're uh, off, out of the picture. Oh, yeah, yeah. Hi, Judy. Hi. Yeah. Um, Judy, I get it from one of those mass market supermarkets. I, I always found name. it. Yeah, I, it's not the Honestly, ABC. I, I found it at <laughs> Coles. Yeah, that's where Ooh, it's the only place I found um, it also. And I think otherwise you have to go to your local fruit shop, whether that's Patrick's or Parisi's or whatever. And if you're in the east, if you're yeah. in the east, yeah. <laughs> yeah. And uh, because I happen to know where Judy lives. <laughs> We know where you live, Judy. I'm watching you. <laughs> We're all watching you. Uh, so you could probably go and ask and make a request for it. But the Coles one, I think, is in the organic section, isn't it? It's like it a moves, packet and it has it a couple around. in it. It moves around. There's yeah. three of them yeah. uh, tied up with string. Oh, what about yeah. the um, Asian supermarkets? They often carry down at um, the Haymarket, they carry all those big green vegetables, lots of them. Mm. And, mm. It might Maybe. be there. Dunno. Anyway. Anyway. So, okay, so on to, to do. on to Australia Day, we, we just thought we would share with particularly the overseas viewers, who some of you are going to tune in later because you're asleep now, um, what Australia Day is all about. And do you want to talk about that for a second? Well, I did uh, look up Wikipedia to find out what Australia Day really is because actually, did any of us really know? No, it's just no. lamb on a barbecue. Yeah. And, and you know, for us it's always about the food, so we don't even really care that <laughs> much really about it. That. No, that's not true. But I'm, I'm it joking. was when the first fleet arrived in Port Jackson in 1788. 1788. 1788, and that, that commemorates that day in 1788. So how many years is that now? January the 26th. We're not here for maths. <laughs> we're here for maths. <laughs> and the rest doesn't matter. <laughs> but what we do on Australia Day, everyone has barbecues and makes pavlovas. If you want a good pavlova recipe, there's a great one from the iconic Margaret Fulton in our first book. First book. Uh, the food, the stories, the sisterhood, and it's a beautiful pavlova. So have a look at that. Or... If you want to riff on pavlova, do our frozen lemon meringue from book two. Ah, that's a great thing actually. Because it's beautiful... due ahead, yeah. it's in the freezer and you just slice and serve it and it's amazing in summer. And if you go to our website and look up frozen lemon meringue under desserts, you will find a video which actually shows you how to make it. So head to the so website. Yeah, that's the pavlova. It doesn't really show it. Sorry, Liz. Get out of the way. Yeah. Got it? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, beautiful. All right. Okay, so let's get cooking. Yes. We're going to do three things. We're going to, Lynn's going to make the gazpacho. We're going to make the base cake mixture for the lamington, get it in the oven. And then we've done one ahead, of course. And we're going to show you how to roll the lamingtons in the chocolate and the coconut. So let's get cooking. Let's go. I'm going to swan around and have cups of tea. That's good. Okay. <laughs> Did you notice my makeup? I put my makeup on, by the way. Where are we going to start? Let's start with the cake, shall we? 
shall we? Over. Yeah. <laughs> I'm trying not to pan too fast. Okay. Okay. So let me tell you about this cake. Do you want to talk about the lamingtons while we're making it, where the recipe comes from, before I talk about the cake? Uh, okay. <laughs> no, yeah. Am I supposed uh, to turn? You don't have to. No, you can. I don't I can know if that's any good. I can make the cake as we. Okay. Sorry, guys. Okay. So let me talk about the cake first, and then while I'm mixing it and putting it in the thing, you can tell the story of where okay. it comes from because it's actually a great story. Come a little closer, Jackson. Have a look. So in here, I've intimate? got, and you can find this recipe on our website and in the first book. This is butter. We've got 125 grams of butter and some sugar. You'll have to look that up because I can't remember. And that's mixed, it's creamed together. So we've used the um, k Peter or the paddle, I think we decided it's called. And that's mixed in the, in the KitchenAid. And then we're going to add an egg one at a time. So I just do like that. I always like to put my eggs in a glass before I use them because if you're going to crack them straight into the bowl, and it's a yucky egg, which happens from time to time, you've ruined everything in the bowl, which is sort of annoying. So just have a look. One egg's going in, and we're going to mix that till it's combined. Can you, can you get in there? Okay. See, it's lovely and smooth, and we're going to add the next egg. And sometimes, I don't know about you, sometimes I lift this up a tiny bit just to get the edges very, very gently and carefully. Welcome to our morning, Orange. And Diana, I'm glad you're here. I'm glad you're watching. And then I'm going to turn this down to very slow. This egg is called a 2468, this egg. This cake <laughs> is called a 2468 cake. And it comes from Rayleigh Don, which Jackie will tell you about it in one second. But the idea is that it's two eggs four ounces of butter, six ounces of sugar, and eight ounces of flour, and half a cup of liquid. And we're using milk, or you can use orange juice. And that's how easy it is. It's a really simple, perfect butter cake as a lamington base. So Jax, while I alternate the flour and the milk, you can talk about Rayleigh. Okay, so we used to live down the road from Auntie Rayleigh and the whole family. And we knew that around the time of the Montefiore home fate, we would be um, asked or would volunteer our time because it was such fun to go down to her house and she would have slabs and slabs of this ready-made cake that needed to be um, have the ch chocolate soaked around it and then rolled in the uh, coconut and it was such an honor and a pleasure there would be a kitchen full she would pull out her extra kitchen table space so that we could all gather around and do this communal Thing, which was making lamingtons for an old people's home and it was such fun and we would use the um not the pitch forks what are those forks that you use yeah like meat? a baking fork a, a baking can fork. you just tell diana please we're making lamingtons oh, okay diana, diana we're making lamingtons for in honor of australia day and um yes and um, Suzanne Selwood, thank you so much for tuning in from Perth. Oh, all the way from Perth. I'll Hi, be there. On, oh, and it's I'll nice and early. Friday. It's nice and early. For yeah, you. good She's morning. Up, up at good the morning. Door. It is uh, quarter past eight in the morning over there. Well oh, done. It's so early. It's early enough. It's early enough. I wouldn't be. I think thank it's you early for watching anyway. I think it's early to tune into Facebook, honestly. And where is Kalala Hillary Cohen? Thank you That's for tuning in. Okay. Have a look at this Kalala, lovely mixture. It is actually beautiful. Can you oh, all see that? It's that. really lovely. So and I'm just going to... Consistency. I've lined a um, baking tin, and this is a beautiful one from Le Creuset, and really a non-stick one that we got from Ever10 and uh, online, which is fantastic. So I'm just going to put this in here. Actually, I'm gonna Scrape it out. Under to get the full consistency. Oh, who loves these met these um, rubber spatulas for baking? Oh, I mean, I cannot, so cannot silicone. live without it. Are they silicone, not rubber? Oh, they are silicone, you're right. But they're rubbery. Watching from Victoria is Maria. South Coast is Hilary Cohen. Oops, no surname. No, that's on, it's fine. Oh, it's on okay. Facebook. <laughs> it's the ABC, I know. <laughs> So this is it. And good morning, Suzanne. So good to have you all watching. We love having you watching. Gives us much nachos. It does. Nachos is a great word. It's a, it's a Yiddish word. And uh, you've got to get the ch right. So it's got to be nachos. <laughs> and it means inex joy inexplicable joy. Yes. You can't really 
even translate it. So this cake is ready and it's going in the oven. And the oven's on. No, the oven will be on. I'll put the oven on. Mm, okay. The oven's not on. Okay. That and was... I'm not going to lick my finger today because I'm being healthy, okay? Look, we're going to follow her to the kitchen, to the... <laughs> Look, it's gone. Okay. Just about your time. Let's go. What's the temperature for the oven? 180? Yeah, but I'm going to leave it off because it's just a bit Oh, messy. Surrey in the UK. Shelley Friedman's watching oh, from hi, Surrey. <laughs> That's pretty awesome. Okay, let's go to the gazpacho. Okay. Lynn, I'm coming in. Jack's come around this side so we're not looking at the light. And we don't yeah. have all that light. I agree. Sorry, everyone. I'm moving fast. Panning slowly, but moving fast. Oh, much better, Lynn. <laughs> Morning. This recipe, this gazpacho, comes from this incredible cook in South Africa called Sharon Glass. And Sharon Glass has really taught so many women to cook. She continues to publish fantastic cookbooks and runs cooking classes where we all learn so much. So in this recipe, it's really beautiful, it's easy, it's got no bread in it, so it's, it's not that not, traditional. Not that traditional. Um, and we use this fantastic blender. So in here are the tomatoes, the cucumber, the capsicum, the onion. And for this recipe, we de-seed a cucumber, Ooh. which is really simple. It's a telegraph cucumber. We peel it. We love a good de-seed. Telegraph's also called a continental cucumber, for those mm -hmm. who aren't oh, Slice yeah. it in half. I didn't know that. And scrape out the seeds. Just while we're doing this, Suzanne um, has asked how often do we have our videos? Um, every two weeks or so. Right. So Subject to special circumstances. Yes, and holiday time. Okay. And so there we go. Yes. Ah, oh, that's great, Lynn. There we go. And this goes in here. I, I love that it's due ahead. Sorry, Lynn. I love that this is, you can do this three yeah, days ahead. Absolutely. And it's actually better because it settles. Yeah. All the flavours merge all this together. together. It really does settle. The other oh, thing is that this recipe that. makes an enormous quantity. So I've, what I've done here is I've actually done it in two parts. Yeah. We can't wait, so we started, sorry. We already Cheers. caught ourselves oh, look at glass, them. I'm sorry. Oh, you had jumped ahead. Now, yes. if it was 6 p.m., I, I want to note that it's about quarter past 11 here or something, 20 past 11 in the morning. But if it was 6 p.m., this would be quite nice with a shot of vodka. vodka. I was thinking this exactly the same thing. Touch of chili. Oh, I'll oh, have a look. Jack's Jack. got to got us uh, watch this, right? On. This is the best. Look at this. Ever. Lisa's uh, oven is a gagger now. Just answering your question there. And look at how our gazpacho is. And the other thing is, I'm not a garlic lover, so I've left out the garlic in this recipe. That's the You can add it in or not. And depending on your blender, you'll get a more smooth or a more cold Correct. Yeah, yeah, correct. Yeah. So this blender is very, very powerful and it almost emulsifies yeah it really makes the texture is amazing but i've done this in a food processor and it's also fine just as good, just as good. i agree so lynn's putting in some red wine vinegar and, and some salt and vodka no vodka. no vodka not yet diana says it's never too early for vodka <laughs> somewhere <laughs> it must be vodka <laughs> <Urquhart. laughs> and a good <laughs> rock from the drinker <laughs> yeah exactly no, from the person who would never put vodka early. <laughs> and a, really a drop of tabasco and you can put the tomato juice going now or after? Does it matter? Does it matter? No, it doesn't matter at all. I've decided that blenders are very forgiving. So you could really chuck everything in at once and just. Hi, put Trish it on. from the Sunshine Coast. Oh, it must be fabulous up there today. Join us for making the spatula. And in the Edmonton. Please like our post. I love this. I gotta say that um, I've had a few lunches over the last few months and I've served this. Make it the day before so it's really chilled. Yeah. And then I fry some little olive oil bits, olive oil, 
fry some little sourdough bits in olive oil till they're golden and I pickle some red onions which that recipe is in the new book and put it on top in the middle of the soup and it just takes it to another another level it's so, it's so refreshing it's so summer. lovely yeah but this is good just as it is it's yeah. warm it's beautiful yeah. just on the summer thing and garnishes I don't think it would necessarily match gazpacho but I have been frying capers Mm, till they're the really crunchy mm. and oh they're so good as Big a garnish. Or baby. The yeah. salted baby capers that I rinse off. Yeah. I squeeze them really dry on a paper towel so they don't spit too much yeah, in yeah. the oil. And then I'm frying them in extra virgin olive oil and they go like a caper chip. Oh, I used to have a recipe from someone where they, they did the big, you know, the big capers. Like we all have oh. baby now. Oh. And the big ones, I'll wait till that's finished. The berries, the no, 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 like capers, but, capers. but normal sized ones, and they open up like flowers when you fry them. Yes. And you get little caper flower fried things, and they're good. I don't know, they might no. be nice in this. I don't see why not. What they might this? be. I think they it might would be, be quite nice. So garnish away to your heart's content is the lesson here. <laughs> okay, we back, done? Back we're to done. Lynn. Okay. Oh, we're yeah. done. Lynn, we're done. We're done. Cucumbers oh. are de seeded, everything's mush. A huge jug of deliciousness. And now you, you just need to. Put this in the fridge. This so it can will get go nice in the and fridge shipped. and it'll last for a good few days. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Well, depending on how many vodkas you want to drink. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> what are we up to Let's now, Lisa? Take time. So, for anyone who's just tuned in, we are the Monday Morning Cooking Club gals and we are in the Monday Morning Cooking Club kitchen. This is our Facebook Live number nine. Uh, the, for one to eight, you can see on our YouTube channel, just go to YouTube and find Monday Morning Cooking Club. Um, and this one will be posted on our Facebook page. And please, please, if you can like it and share it, it helps us build this amazing online cooking community that we're trying to create. So like, share, make us happy. Thank you. So back to the lamington. So my cake has come out and honestly, it's a little bit um, flat. Um, Let's call it narrow. <laughs> Um, you know, maybe it's the side, the tin was a little big, but it really doesn't matter. So we were discussing and debating, and I'd love your input if anyone wants to help us. Normally I would cut them, like I like them quite small, probably that size, right? So each one would be about four by four centimetres. But because it's flat, I guess it doesn't really matter, they don't have to be square. We thought we might make little... I think you should call them slim. <laughs> <laughs> so should we make slim squares, or should we make... What, si what want, shape should we make? Anyone? I, I, I want bite size. I want bite size. I want size. bite size. Because I think then you get Lemonets. more chocolate per... What do we call them? Square centimetre. I'm just going to cut off the, um, the, very the edge. edges because about, they're round. How about lemonettes? I think we should call them... Lemonitas. <laughs> diet lamingtons. Yes, no, no. Okay, no. I'm not putting the word diet with a lamington. That's okay, just to fix the boots. Okay, see how I've cut them on the diagonal? That was not intentional. <laughs> so let's go on. It's easier. It's easier actually if you cut off. I think yes, if you cut edges. off the edges and eat them. Who wants to eat the edges? Not me. Anyone? No thanks. Thank you. Okay. Anyone there want to come and eat the edges? And then we're going to cut them. Hi Adrian. Thanks for joining us. Hope you're enjoying our lamingtons. Where's Adrian together now. from? Adrian didn't say. So for those who follow um, us on Instagram and follow my Insta stories, you would have seen me make this batch of cake on Saturday. So this is two day old cake and it is actually perfect now for Lamingtons because you, if you make it and do it, it's, it's very hard to, well it's not very hard, it's, it's easier to poke it with the fork and roll it when it's just a day old. So I would do it a day ahead. This is two day ahead and it's still delicious feeling. Okay. So let's just cut this and you could cut the whole slab into the size you want. You know I'm very, very big on freezing. Yes. And um, I think you could make this cake and freeze it. Jack, what, what do you think? Oh, make the 100%. cake, freeze it, defrost it and turn it into the lamingtons. Yeah, I think so. I think so. I I mean, think so. What, whatever you freeze halts from where it's yeah, frozen. I, so I, I think right. the lamington, the chocolate part of it would just take away any chance at all of it. Yeah. So you could have measured this with a ruler <laughs> because I'm going to get 18,000 different size lamingtons because it's, it's not that precise, but it really doesn't matter because there's one thing that we love. Once you put it all Oh, up, and right? we need to do this yeah, now. Yeah, I thought that I, if you yeah. direct so me, I'll do it. Just, I'll just fill up with a cup of hot water and you can mix it. 
So, do I need a, a, a I'll spatula? I'll pass you a spoon. Oh. A metal spoon, please? Uh, no. Hello. Tell them, you can tell them why not. I, I was poking She's so fun. mean to me. I'm She's so mean. Fun because a metal spoon or metal for Lisa is like someone like dragging their fingers down a blackboard, their fingernails, and so I was poking a bit of fun at her. Do I do this bit by Hence, bit with the water? I don't think so. I think just in. put it all in. Okay. We see the so this is live. This is Facebook Live and this is happening live as, as you watch it, okay? Hi Selena, thanks for joining us. Trish wants to know who's eating them all when they're finished, the, the lamington. I'm not. And I'm not. And I'm not. <laughs> and I'm definitely not. <laughs> <laughs> so they're just going to sit here and look pretty until... <laughs> I don't know. Cooper. Maybe Cooper's going to eat them. No. no, the good news is that between all of no, us we have Cooper. 17 children. How many kids do we have? <laughs> Is that right? Yes, yeah. And so, um, okay, 17,000 children. Unless there's any more and children. So that we we're going to feed all the kids and all the neighbours' kids. I'm going to give you a whisk because I'd like you to get rid of those. Yes, please. Um, yes, lots. please. I, I think that would be wise. And I don't mind a metal whisk on a metal bowl. It's just those thin metal cooking spoons um, on a metal bowl that I really don't like. I actually had a whole load of young people for dinner on Friday night. Yep. Um, and it was incredible. I cooked just as much as I do for any other table of 14 people. You know, I had 14 people, but there were 10 people in their young 20s, early 20s. And every single drop of food down to the last grain of rice got eaten. That's pretty good. Yeah. It's a good sign. You did something right. Or oh, they're starving to death. And yeah. <laughs> they anything. all live away from home and uh, they wanted home cooking, I isn't think. Isn't that fabulous? You could open up a kitchen. <laughs> Look, go. all those lumps have disappeared with that whisk. I like whisking. It's a secret hobby. Beautiful. Okay, we can go. I think. Okay. So... Eliza, you've asked how many serves does it make? Are you talking about the lamingtons or are you talking about the gazpacho? Good morning, Eliza. <laughs> the gazpacho makes a lot actually. It probably serves uh, 10 to 12, yeah, I would think. Least. That's a lot. Okay, so let's go. I'm going to pass that over here. Thank you, that looks beautiful. Chocolate's on See, its See, it's way. lovely smooth. Um, it's really nice. It's Look, really, really fork. nice. Okay, so this is the That's fork the she was fork talking about. That we used back in the day. So I can't oh, help it. Question How many people would you feed with this size cake? Are we talking lamingtons? Well, well it either. depends how many. Two? Yeah. <laughs> or in this case none yes. yes you're feeding none okay the secret with this and I have to tell you you have to listen to this because we've all Wait. if you leave this in the chocolate mixture too long it will disintegrate and you'll have just the fork. chocolate mixture cakes float, bits floating around and a fork with nothing on it so you need to dip in and out quickly okay so we're dipping and rolling the other little tip about rolling we've got two different types of coconut here there is desiccated coconut. I don't know about you, I can't remember how many S's and how many C's. I always have to look at the Double pack. Double S, one C. For desiccated, I think that's yes. right. I think yes, that's right. definitely right. Desiccated, which is the finer one. And then there's shredded. And this is very coarse shredded. Um, it's organic shredded and it's lovely. lovely. That's and beautiful. And that coconut. makes a beautiful lamb. And we're going to do both and see how we go. Um, remember, you just have to dip, turn, and into the coconut. If you do it into the coconut bowl and keep doing it, the coconut goes brown. So I've got a little plate here because it's sort of a bit better if you want pristine looking white uh, can I, lamingtons. Can I move this away from the yeah. camera? So let's do this. So let's dip, the, I've made a big one just to see. So I'm gonna go dip, out, and let's just do traditional to start with. And that's it. So it's dip, stop, drop, and that roll. It would be better on a bigger plate. It would be, I agree. Shall we get you a large plate? I got the littlest plate that I have. But you can see how easy it is and how delicious it is. Oh, yum. Yum. Some people put a filling in the middle. Yes, cream and jam. Cream and jam. In the olden or... days. Do we want to do that? No. no. This is the best. Okay. Look at that. That's ready to go. It's ready to eat. It's okay. sitting here waiting for whoever wants it. Okay. <laughs> so let's, um... All right. But remember, the chocolate goes into it. See, and then you get all those little chocolatey bits. So you just have to manage that um, bit by bit. And I think that's just what I'm trying to, to show you. Okay, so Can I'm going to need a teacher or something. Can you do one more? Yeah, a little one? Yeah. 
because the, the little one's really tiny. And if you've got a deep bowl for the chocolate, it's easier, easier. so you can dunk. Yeah, right. and, so and, so really dunking. That's very okay. true. So um, it's dunk, okay. stop, drop, and roll. <gasps> Beautiful. Good dunking, Lise. Thanks. Drop and in. that's it. And now rolling. Go. Right. Really? Okay. Rolling. Yeah. Mm. It is. Yeah. And if you leave with... it in, it is harder to stick this one, but you know, you've just got to you be You might need a more viscous um, chocolate mixture, a, a denser chocolate mixture for it to stick. Do you know what I and mean? And what I like do is it's soaked into the cake. If you're going to then put them in like in a Tupperware because you're going to eat them this afternoon or tomorrow, you should put a layer of coconut at the bottom and then the co a coconut will. The, the pause in Lisa's voice was because she didn't like what I'm doing. No, not at all. I Not just thought all. there were a few gaps, and so I would. But perhaps the other way around might work a, better. What do you think? Do a mixture. I don't. I think if we do the other way it's around, beautiful. the big won't stick at all. I've in. seen it done like that, and then they just sprinkle some little ones on top. Some, some of the, bits the shreddy top. bits, so it just sits on top like a garnish. Yeah. yeah. That's a good idea. Yeah. Shelley, that first Lamington's got your name on it. Since you're feeling homesick, just come and get it. Yours to be picked up. She's feeling homesick. And is this making her feel worse? Maybe it's making her feel better. So this is just a fun Hi, thing Nick. to do. Welcome, Nikki. So you can see the, the desiccated sticks, sticks much better, but I prefer the look of just the... I prefer the look of the shredded, but the desiccated yeah, is easier. I like easier. the shredded. I like, let's try shredded with... Um, is that what you're saying, Jack? Just shredded. Yeah, we pass yeah. the shredded just over. For, just it, for it was just on top of the garnish. It would fall off as soon as you move it, but it was just... It looked pretty. Mm. I love the little ones. They're yeah, really I do too. They're the really lemon, the laminettes. Yes. Are we going to call them laminettes? Laminettes. Laminettes. <laughs> Laminettes. In keeping with my one. Yeah. What do we think? Which ones do you like, everybody? So I want to show you. If you leave it in too long, let's just do one and experiment. Oh, look, okay. Look, look, look. So you go. Yeah. Blah blah blah. Yes. So you put the lamington in and go watch and do some something TV. else. You watch some TV. Have a game of no, tennis. No. Pull it out now and imagine how rich in chocolate in the middle it would no, be. No. See, it doesn't even. Until it drops off, then you've got to get a spoon and go fishing. See, it hasn't dropped off. But what happens is the inside is now chocolatey. I mm, think. Which could be good. I could be wrong. Maybe it's not. Let's so have it's a look. It's just a bit I more rusty. Well, oh. see, no, it soaks in a bit much. I think it's too chocolatey yeah. for me. Is there such a thing? Yeah, well, for me, I, yes. I would be experimenting with having a tiny bit less water in that. And, and seeing if it sticks more. And seeing if it sticks more. Well, I don't want to mess with Rayleigh's recipe, really. No, I agree. I agree. That's very true. I think that's that, a true tried and tested. I think yeah, that I do prefer... True. You've just got it. Yeah. You know, we were making hundreds. You've got to get the job done and you've got to get it yes. done well. Yes. I think that the answer here is that the des the shredded that is not a th as thick as that is better. Yeah, this is a little bit too thick. There is something shredded. in between. Mm -hmm. yes. So that's our lamingtons. I think we've made enough. What do you think? Anyone want to come over and get them? Diana says lamingtinis. Ah, they like it. Nice. Look, it's look how much they like it. They're, they're nodding. They're, they're smiling. Thanks, Diana. I think you should trademark that name really quickly. Lamingtinis. Okay, so these are lambing teenies. And what I like about it is you can just almost pop one in your mouth. Like almost this. You could just go like what? one, two, three. Ah, uh, that could be how it is. Yeah. Anyone want one? Someone's got to have a bite. Someone has to have a bite. Does it have to be me? Barley's. Okay, I'm going to have a bite. Just, I got it. Someone's got to take one for the team. Okay. Going to take one for the team? You've got to, got to eat something. Yeah. Right. Good girl, Lee. Happy Australia Day, everybody. Oh. That's really good. It's really good. See? Nice cake inside. Yeah. Perfect Chocolate doesn't enough. go too far in. It's really good. Trisha's on her way down from uh, Queensland to okay, get we'll some. Get some. Let's come over here and say goodbye. I think it's time to wrap up. Um, we've been chatting far too long today. Oh, we did have a lot to catch up on. It was the beginning of 2017. Um, and when are we back next? Do we have a date? I think it's February. We'll just work. Bear with us one sec. Gotta let get Lammy to know my team. What about the awesome videoing? Come in, then. Yeah, come in. Jack, awesome thanks for the video. awesome videoing. Come in. Um, oh, hi, Karen. Nice to see you. Karen's been in the whole time. Oh, okay. Well, I haven't seen her, so yeah. nice to see you. <laughs> um, so we're going to say goodbye now and I'll tell you that we are going to have Bye. a little break because um, I'm going on a little trip to Texas to do a little. Um, 
barbecue tour to check out the brisket in Texas. You've okay? got a stitch in okay. that. I'm no, going, I'm no. going way better, Margaret River. Okay, so Sorry, she's going to Margaret better. River. Wine so, tour, wine. Oh, nice. Are yeah, you going to be on the show? So, so what I want to say to you all is follow us on Instagram. So there's Monday Morning CC, which is sort of the general group one. But Insta Stories on that is going to be my travels in Texas. So if you're interested to follow along, please check that out. And Marilyn is Marilyn Frank um, on Instagram. And if you follow her, you can also follow her Insta Stories in the Margaret River. So we're going to be away doing all that exciting stuff. And then we're going to come back to you on Monday, February the... 22nd, maybe? Yeah, ish. 20 something. We'll keep you posted. Yeah, maybe that's the 17, 18, 20th. Anyway, whatever that Monday, the Monday is, we'll be back. Please remember to like our Facebook post, um, share it with all your friends because we really, really want to grow this cooking community and be with you every fortnight in the kitchen because it's fun. Well, we have fun. We hope we you do. do too. We do. Um, we do. Any questions, send us an email, send us a message on Facebook or an email. That's it. Nothing Signing else to say for now. Signing I think we have a great, have a great month. See you. Bye, Bye all. Bye.